Okay, um, if you've seen the previous video, talk briefly about uh, sleep apnea. And um, an Af as an African American, um, and I've gained weight too, I've been trying to exercise and do what I need to do to be diligent. But the sleep apnea is, it, gives, it makes you have an increase, it says that, you know, if you have sleep apnea, you have an increased risk of having um, health problems. Um, cardiac events, stroke, if you have certain situations like diabetes and things like that, it can make it worse for you. Now, um, I did start the sleep apnea uh, two days ago, and so far it's worked out. Um, a little change, you know, because you got this thing on your nose, but I've had well, two nights, I've had pretty much good sleep. I didn't have feel like grogginess and all that kind of stuff. And I felt like I was really rested. Now, I'm going to uh, say that it's a, it's a good thing. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it should have, I should I mean, I need it, okay? Now, the other thing is that um, a couple of years ago, my best friend, his name is Barry, he, um, he had um, all the signs for uh, needing sleep apnea. Um, he was obese. He was diabetic. Um, um, he was sedentary. I'm not sedentary. I, you know, I get up and and, and get it done. Uh, walk five thousand steps uh, at least three days a week. Uh, go to the gym, but he didn't. And uh, and it was uh, it was a situation um, that his doctor should have. Um, at least helped him with that because he would fall asleep during the daytime. And it's one of the reasons why he quit his job. Well, he retired because he was falling asleep during the daytime hours. And that's one of the signs of sleep apnea. And um, some of the people at his job said, that um, this, they were allegations saying that he was sleeping on the job. Um, and I believe that that's true, but I wasn't working on the case because that's, that's just me. But I know him. Um, whenever we get together, he would fall asleep. But that's all. I mean, he's done that his whole entire life. And, but towards the end of his life, he, um, he gained much more weight. Um, he became a diabetic. Um, and as we got, as we get older, we, you know, we gain a lot more weight, but he gained a lot more weight. Plus, um, they were, uh, he had a lot more problems and, uh, and I think, believe he had, uh, he had problems with circulation also. Um, he had, uh, I believe he might've had congestive heart failure too because he had um, leg swelling. He had to use compression leg stockings um, and he couldn't really walk as far as he used to. Um, uh, so I believe he definitely had some, had some issues with uh, his heart. Um, and I believe that had he had the situation with sleep apnea uh, or his doctor should have diagnosed him with sleep apnea, um, he might still have been around a day. But, you know, as a caveat, he still needed to do X, Y, Z. But this would have helped him, especially with his not um, um, being able to be as, have as much exercise. Now, I remember when we, we were, um, um, we went out to California, the various trips, and he was snoring a lot. You know, he was loud. <laughs> And that's one of the things that sleep apnea does is to help you with snoring. And, uh, and I believe that that probably it was one of the other signs that he probably had. Um, if he had been properly diagnosed and treated, um, um, this probably would have helped him. Um, and uh, he might have had a better outcome, meaning that he could still be probably um, still be here. And he could probably, he could have also continued to work, you know, with the sleep apnea machine. Um, he would have the daytime sleepiness. 
uh, he probably would have been a lot more active um, instead of being more sedentary. So uh, the situation is with sleep apnea, it's a treatment and I believe that probably would have helped him, but because he was much more sedentary, you know, but um, those are my thoughts. I mean, it's hard for me, uh, you know, being a, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't his prescriber or I wasn't his physician. Uh, I'm only um, his friend, but I'm looking outside, looking in um, this clinical situation here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard for me. I'm not, and, you know, I've had to process this over a number of years. Um, to, you know, to pass out, why did he pass away? And there were some various signs, you know, he was overweight, um, he had diabetes and other situations, you know. And my whole thing is, is to try to compartmentalize as to what happened with him. Um, you know, but he's, I mean, he, he, he died too young, and, you know, he was, but uh, he was my friend and, um, and he's not here and I miss him. And I'm trying to put the pieces together as to what happened. And now that I think I have the, the pieces to, to, to put my to put my questioning at, at at rest as to why what it could have and should have been done for him. Although he's passed away now, um, you know um, that's what we have to do. Okay. But sleep apnea, I mean, I, I'm enjoying it. It's helping my life. And, uh, you know, it's, it has to do, I have to do what I have to do to keep surviving and to help my family. Okay, I'm out.